Group B rally was an era of extremes. Extreme power, extreme speed, extreme danger. So what did it take to be the best? To take on madness and win. To cheat death and laugh in the face of physics, trusting their wrath would be repelled by a mere steel cage. Peugeot, finding more success than anyone else, won two drivers and two manufacturers' titles in the short five years of Group B insanity. But nothing lasts forever. This is the story of the Peugeot 205 T16. Far away from the brutal rally stages that would soon propel Peugeot to the top of motorsport's toughest series, a new family hatchback was in development. Project M24, started in the late 1970s, was Peugeot's internal code for the car that would replace the 104. Following the 1977 collapse of Chrysler Europe, PSA Peugeot Citroën had hoovered up the pieces, absorbing Simca and the Roots Group, who had experience building small family hatchbacks. Additionally, within the assets of the Roots Group was the little-known Talbot Mark, and it will become clear soon why I mention it. With newly acquired expertise and production facilities, Peugeot's 104 successor would be everything that it needed to be. Practical, reliable enough, and cheap. So how did it end up being the fastest rally car in the world? During development of the 205, Peugeot's now hotly anticipated new hatchback, Talbot managed to pick up a WRC Manufacturers Championship with a Chrysler Lotus Sunbeam. WRC, which was at the time governed by the Group 4 rules, was about to undergo a major rule change that promised to make rallying the most electrifying sport money could buy a ticket to. And Peugeot, like many others, saw the huge marketing potential of having their new hatchback be the star in what would surely be an exceptionally popular sporting spectacle. Talbot had proven they could make that dream come true, and so the Peugeot chairman formed Peugeot Talbot Sport, and feeling that its leader should be French, experienced rally co-driver and future motorsport management legend Jean Todd was quickly put in charge. With the 205 not expected to be available to buy until 1983, Peugeot Talbot Sport were not in any rush to develop their new rally car. Project M24 Rally wasn't initiated until late 1981, and progress was slow with most of the work happening at Talbot's Coventry headquarters in the UK. But word came from above that this project was of utmost importance to Peugeot, and so development was moved to France, where things began to move a lot more quickly. With the opportunity to reinvent Peugeot as a motorsport brand, and with the accounting department convinced of the adage of what wins on Sunday sells on Monday, the project had a near infinite budget. The goal was clear make the fastest possible car within the confines of the rules. Oh, and make sure it looks a little bit like a 205. The road-going 205, being an affordable hatchback, was, even in its sportiest trims, front-wheel drive. The days of front-wheel drive were long over in rally. Peugeot's French rivals of Renault had chosen to convert their Renault 5 Turbo into a mid-engined rear-wheel drive rally car. But Peugeot weren't about to start dealing in half measures. The engine moved to the middle, like the R5, but power would be sent to all four wheels, much more like Audi's Quattro. That power would come from a 1.8-litre turbocharged inline four, which would be mounted transversely to maximise the weight distribution benefit of mounting the engine in the middle. Once applying the forced induction displacement multiplier, the car was eligible for the 2 to 2.5 litre class, which had a minimum weight of just 890 kilograms. While the M24 Rally, by now called the 205 Turbo 16, often shortened to just T16, was designed to look a lot like the normal 205 for the sake of aiding sales, the cars had pretty much nothing in common. As such, Peugeot, like most everybody else competing in Group B, would need to build a homologation special. The Group B rules stipulated that all competing cars must be based on a road-legal production car, of which at least 200 examples had been made. The term homologation special refers to cars that were built solely for the purpose of homologating a team's racing cars. 
not exactly in the spirit of the rules, but all of that went out the window pretty quickly. The racing T16 was little more than a silhouette racing car. A steel frame dressed in a thin composite veneer of Peugeot 205 that served to make it look a little bit like the road car and as saleable ad space. The brutal machine that lived underneath was built for just one purpose. To win. The hope was to have the car homologated for Group B rally competition by the beginning of the 1984 season. The pedestrian 205 had gone on sale in 1983, but the company couldn't build the T16 homologation cars fast enough in order to meet the January 1st homologation requirement. This unfortunately left Peugeot late to the party in 1984, starting the season from the fifth event at the Tour de Course. The car managed to finish an impressive fourth on debut in the hands of Jean-Pierre Nicolas. Issues around the car's aerodynamic downforce and strange in-air characteristics were reaffirmed by the drivers. The feeling was that the car needed more downforce, and the fact that the engine had been mounted off to one side, predominantly behind the passenger seat, meant that any time the car was in the air, it had a tendency to try and roll on its side. The car didn't score any points at the following event, and the two events after that it didn't compete at all, as the team set about trying to solve its strange handling characteristics. But modifications were limited in scope due to the homologatory requirements of any major changes. Round 9 was the Finnish rally, and the Peugeot 205 T16, in the hands of legendary Finnish rally driver Ari Vatanen, managed its first win. An upset to the Audi team, who had up to this point in the season been dominant, with their Audi Quattro and drivers Volta Roll, Hanu Mikola, and drivers championship leader Stig Blomqvist. The next event, the San Remo Rally in Italy, saw Vartanen take his second victory in the 205 T16. A statement of intent by the Peugeot team that they were ready to fight at the very front of the field. Peugeot chose not to contest the Ivory Coast Rally as it didn't contribute towards manufacturer championship points that year. As Vartanen had missed too many events that year because of Peugeot's late start, he didn't have a chance at fighting for the driver's championship. But the final event of the year, the RAC Rally in Wales, did count towards manufacturer's championship points, and the event was won by Vartanen and his co-driver Terry Harriman to end their debut season on a high. Despite only competing in half of the championship point scoring events in 1984, Peugeot managed to finish an impressive third in the manufacturer's standings, and hopes were high that with a full season entry, Peugeot Talbot Sport might be able to take the fight to 1984's winners, Audi. Despite Audi's upgraded Quattro S1 being unveiled in late 1984, Vartanen continued his winning streak into early 1985, winning the first event of the season in Monte Carlo. Peugeot Talbot Sport had built a rocket ship of a rally car, and it looked unlikely that anybody would be able to catch them. Audi had finished second to Peugeot in the first event, and the story repeated itself at event number two in Sweden as well, with Ari Vartanen taking a second victory. At the third round in Portugal, the 205 would once again win, but this time it wasn't in the hands of Vartanen, rather his teammate Timo Salonen, who claimed a decisive victory over second place, which was a by now very outdated rear-wheel drive Lancia 037. Audi had been relegated to third. The fourth event was the Safari Rally in Kenya, and is known to be one of the toughest events on the WRC calendar. The 205 didn't come close to troubling the podium in this event, but nor did their main competitor, Audi. The event was won by Toyota in the Celica TCT. At the Tour de Course, the fifth event of the season, tragedy struck. Lancia driver Attilio Bottega was killed when his 037 collided with a tree. The event was tragic, and it wouldn't be the last tragedy to beset the sport. The Tour de Course was won by Jean Ragnotti in a Renault 5 Maxi Turbo. The tragic accident in Corsica raised questions over the safety of Group B cars, but the championship marched forward, and nothing was done. Round 6 was the Acropolis Rally in Greece where Timo Salonen grabbed his second win of the season for Peugeot, with reigning drivers' champion Stig Blomqvist coming second for Audi. It seemed all but certain 
Peugeot would be taking that crown away. Round 7 in New Zealand and again Salonen took victory, only narrowly beating his teammate Ari Vartanen. The team had also introduced the new Evo 2 variant of the 205T16 in New Zealand. The upgrades included a new turbocharger and a new engine cooling system, which together pushed the car's power from around 350 horsepower to 550, although in event trim that would be limited to 500 for reliability reasons. Additionally, there were changes made to the frame to increase stiffness and additional aero parts were added to improve aerodynamic characteristics and handling. Round 8 in Argentina would see disaster strike for the Peugeot team, as one of their cars suffered an enormous accident. Ari Vartanen had a colossal crash at near full speed. The flimsy composite bodywork of the Silhouette racing car fell away shockingly easily, but thankfully the roll cage managed to save both his and his co-driver's lives. At the same event, Timo Salonen would take yet another victory. And not just of the Argentinian rally, but of the entire Drivers' Championship. With five wins up to that point, he had become unbeatable in the Drivers' standings. And Peugeot was one step closer to achieving the motorsport glory they had been so desperately hoping for. Despite having already won the Drivers' Championship, Salonen didn't let up fighting hard to take yet another win in his home rally in Finland at the following event. Once again, beating Audi, who could only manage second place. Audi would exact their revenge at the following event in Italy, snatching victory thanks to Walter Roll, but it was already over. Peugeot Talbot Sport reigned supreme. At the final event of the season, however, a new challenger emerged. The long-anticipated larger Delta S4 dominated the RAC rally, scoring a 1-2 finish on debut. All eyes would be on Lancia going into 1986. The fight was on. Round 1 in Monte Carlo was won by Henry Toivonen and the new blisteringly fast Lancia Delta S4. Peugeot, who had recently done the same thing to Audi, came a distant second place. Round 2 in Sweden saw Peugeot catch a lucky break, with Henry Toivonen's brand new Delta S4 suffering an engine failure, handing Peugeot's Juha Kankkonen the victory, with the other Delta S4 of Marco Allen managing a very close second place. The following event was the Portuguese Rally, one of the sport's darkest ever days. The driver of a competing factory Ford RS200 lost control of his car going round a corner. Something you'll have noticed about Group B was the crowd's affinity for closeness to the track. Undoubtedly this was a thrilling spectator experience, but everybody involved, especially event organisers who are responsible for making sure the events are safe, should have known better. The car barrelled into the crowd. Three spectators were killed, 30 more were injured. All of the factory drivers immediately withdrew from the event, leaving only some privateer entries left competing. The event was won by a Renault 5 Maxi Turbo. Following the horrendous accident in Portugal, the writing was on the wall for Group B, at least in its current form. Despite the tragedy, the championship moved on. The next event was in Kenya, which was won again by Toyota. The following round was the famous Tour de Course in France. A thousand kilometres of twisting, turning tarmac, across just 24 stages. Henry Toivonen and the Lancia Delta S4 were the favourites to win. Toivonen and his co-driver Sergio Cresto were setting blisteringly fast stage times, when, on a particularly secluded part of the rally, the car left the track and plummeted into a ravine, being caught by a tree. Both occupants were killed in the accident, and for FISA, the sport's governing body, this was the final straw. They announced that Group B would be banned from 1987, and also announced a development freeze on all current cars for the remainder of the 1986 season. Jean Todd, head of Peugeot Talbot Sport, was furious at this announcement. His team had a car that they believed would be competitive for years to come, and he decried the fact that FISA had promised at least two years of notice before any major rule changes. 
Fieser's rebuttal was that the current situation was untenable. The 1986 season powered on. Peugeot ended up winning the Tour de Course and the following two events in Greece and New Zealand in the hands of Juha Kankkonen. Larger driver Miki Biazion would take victory in Argentina, before defending champion Timo Salonen would take victory again in his home rally in Finland, with fellow Finn and fellow Peugeot driver Juha Kankkonen taking second place. Lancia took back victory in Italy, but were beaten again in Wales. In the end, Peugeot came out on top, claiming a second consecutive manufacturer's title, and Peugeot driver Juha Kankkonen got the driver's title too. This made the Peugeot 205 T16 the most successful car in Group B Rally, with two manufacturer's titles, two driver's titles, and a total of 16 event wins beating Audi's single manufacturer's title, two driver's titles, and 13 overall event wins. It had been known since 1985 that FISA was exploring the possibility of replacing Group B with a more prototype-esque class in 1988. Dubbed Group S, many of the established Group B manufacturers were working hard on their Group S follow-ups, which would require only 10 cars for homologation. Peugeot had been working on ways to further improve the 205 T16 in order to compete in Group S, but the engineers couldn't find their way around one specific issue, the wheelbase. They knew the longer cars were more stable, and despite its appearance, the 205 T16 had been one of the longer cars competing in Group B, but it just wasn't long enough. They wanted to make it longer, without distorting the shape so much as to make the 205 badge even more laughable than it already was, and Peugeot was launching a potential solution to this problem in 1987. The 405. The plan was to do exactly what they'd done with the 205, and build a competition spec version of the 405 really it was based on the 205 T16 and they extended the chassis, in order to drive sales of the new car. But all of that came to an end, with FISA's cancellation of Group B and the proposed Group S in the wake of Henry Toivonen and Sergio Cresto's deaths. To hear Larcher's full rally story, check out this video on screen now. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, and until next time, goodbye.